because this is the first day, uh, second half of 2024. I think we're off to a great start. I'm excited. I'm completely short as I usually am. But in spite of that, every single position I've got is down in a good way. You know, the stock's down, so my position's up. I'd like to think that's because these are lovingly chosen charts based on good technical analysis. It's a good day for a bear. We're green on the ES and green on the NQ. We begin as we always do with a spider. Well, oh, goodness gracious, we're, it's like a hostage situation here. We got one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, like 10 days in a row, 10 trading days in a row where we've been locked in this little bitty range. We're just, just not, not budging. It's kind of fascinating in a way, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a gift in a way also, because it gives us lots of time to find good opportunities under the surface, which is what I've been trying to do. I'm out of money now, so I don't have any buying power left, so that I can't get any more opportunities. It's okay that we're having such low volatility because there's there's good stuff happening under the surface. And the next symbol I wanted to bring up for you here is the good old diamonds. Not as heavily traded as the spiders, not even close. It too has been in a tight range for about a week or so and in a broader range for the whole year. And we're kind of in the middle of the range right now, just so you can see just not a lot of action going on. It's all confined to just a tiny handful of stocks, you know, NVIDIA being the king of them all. Here's another industrial XLI, a little more interesting because we're getting within spitting distance, at least of major support right there, that green dash line. So if we can break that, that, that's kind of a big deal. And then overseas with the EFA, range bound for all this time between the red line here, which is resistance, and the green line here, which is support, looking ultimately for a failure this month of this green line. And that kind of comes off the table if we pierce above this red, but very range bound for, for weeks at this point. So it just seems, you know, kind of all quiet out there, but it's really not if you if you dig down. Chewy's back in the news because Roaring Kitty's back in the news. And I don't mean to make this like a meme show, but it is a part of the cultural fabric out there in the world of trading. And it's kind of amusing to me because as we look in here, and I guess that would have been on Thursday, when the silly little cartoon dog was tweeted out and people went crazy, it blasted higher. That was based on cartoon picture, not on any announcement, not on anything specific, not even with a, not even with a ticker symbol. I mean, it didn't have a dog in CHWY at the bottom. It was just a dog. People assumed correctly that Roaring Kitty was after um, Chewy. The funny thing is that there's two funny things. One, pre-market, it was announced that yes, it's Chewy and I've got a, about a, a quarter billion dollar position. And the second funny thing is that, yeah, it went up, but not nearly as much as last week. It's down hard right now. There are people out there who would have jumped right in because it seemed like a sure thing. You know, this is for real. Because if it went this high on Thursday, surely now that you get the hard data, it'll go up way, way more. Not at all. It's falling hard way below where it was even when the rumor came out. So we're, we're um, under cartoon doggy levels at this point. So crazy stuff. Let's get back to the more serious matters, just past Chewy. This one, desktop metal, I think this is just a good object lesson to be careful to avoid narratives. Because if you look at the description DM is all about, their their credentials are very impressive. Kleiner Perkins backing them, uh, MIT, BMW, uh, about a quarter billion dollars in uh, funding. I think they were voted like one of the most promising innovators back when they came out in 2017. None of that amounted to anything. Just kind of a general investing lesson that it's very easy to have uh, to get caught up in a high quality storyline. But the chart, I think, tells the real picture because you know even back here, we had a magnificent head and shoulders pattern. Uh, and that was the top, you know, capital T-H-E-T-O-P because it's been a grind down all the way ungodly move on to more important stuff than chewy and desktop metals bonds 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 i've been pounding my fist on the desk uh, every day um about the importance of bonds and it's it's going great look what's going on here every day last week we talked about this we did not get above resistance and on the contrary Friday we fell hard and today we fell hard stocks are eventually going to blink their eyes and wake up to this because this is this is a big move I mean, almost 2% today alone. Not only that, look at our friend, the trend line down here. If that cracks, that's going to make a big deal, a really big deal. So that's very exciting. What's up opposing that, the prop things up still, is NVIDIA, which actually was down pretty hard earlier today. It's completely shaken that off. It's in the green again. It hasn't gotten above resistance here, but it definitely shook off. I think there was some antitrust action. France or something like that, something, something took the wind out of its sails. Added to which I just noticed, look what a beautiful job this trend line did. Or is that a trend line or a midline? Let's find out. Okay, that's the midline. Look at that. Is that magnificent? 
the low almost exactly touching that midline, almost to the pixel. Wow. And then SMH, the semiconductor, um, this has not broken. Support, we got very close to it. Once again, support held. Very important to note that it respected support. And until such time as it does, and this is not major support, this is a pretty minor level. It's just this little gap right here. But if I can manage to slip through that, that'll get some selling going, but it has not happened yet. Uh, and of course, all this goodness is flowing into the cube, which was red earlier, just like NVIDIA, just like SMH, but it's now green, just like NVIDIA, just like SMH. We are pretty close to where lifetime highs were. Um, the, the highest we'd ever gotten was only yesterday in trading day terms, that is to say Friday. XLE. This is energy. This still looks bearish as long as it stays under this price gap. Uh, and also XOP green also, but in this instance, a bit of a different resistance level right here, this dashed line. And when I mouse over, you can see the dollar level pop up there. So you can see to the penny what I'm talking about. Now we can mention Tesla. Uh, very strong day, exceptionally strong day. Uh, we have pierced above this black Fibonacci, powerful resistance there. We have closed this gap. We have found resistance at our next Fib level, this red right here. Should we keep seeing strength? This is the next one to watch. This is a very impressive move. I think a major investment bank came up with a um, recommendation on this, which is driving this, but Tesla doing very, very well. And I'm not showing it right now, but Rivian also having another green day. You know, it's extraordinary uh, just how quickly those have recovered. And I've said over and over again, I think Tesla could have a fantastic future. Tesla could be the Apple and the NVIDIA combined, you know, five years from now, but it has to fight its way through all that slog first. Short position that I got out of last week, and I mentioned this, I think on Friday, for not great reasons was DraftKings. And I, I, in my defense, I said very clearly, it's still a great looking chart, but I just got a little nervous about it. Here we go, it's heading down. And in fact, I would say that we've really affirmed this dash line as an important level of resistance here too. I originally got into it because of its position here and went down, 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 and I had some puts on it and I got out, I believe on pretty sure on Friday. Uh, and I mentioned it here on the show, you betcha, down it goes, it's, it's slipped below even Friday's low. So that's still a terrific look one. But I'm still in a bunch of other positions. And let's, in the moments we've got left, let's thumb through those real quick. As I said, last I checked, NQ green, ES green, but every one of these in the red. So yay, Costco, this is becoming a favorite really quickly because there's a lot of juice in this lemon to squeeze. So Costco looking really good. We've got uh, ITB, fantastic. Look at this, down we go. We've broken below. We've completed the pattern. This is big news. Very exciting. Um, here we have uh, IWM, small caps. Even the green ES and the green NQ, uh-uh. Nope. Shaking their head, going the other way. Red on the IWM. Uh, next here, NEEE. -E. Nice tumble on this one. Yeah, moving toward would be the next level that we'd want to see it slip beneath. Starbucks, another red day. Down we go on this one. Very, very steady, very consistent. Nothing dramatic. Just drip, drip, drip a little bit at a time. Shopify got into this one on Friday. Nice tumble on this one as well. And I, I emphasize in the context of a green NASDAQ, this is a NASDAQ stock. This is a, you know, in the echelon of, of high tech stuff. We're getting some red on, on Slumbershade even. United Airlines, which is how I get out here in the first place, UAL. Terrific, bearish engulfing pattern on this one, looking to move below pink uh, zone, that uh, that wonderful round the top. And the last of these um, is uh, XHB, uh, very similar in tone to ITB. Another failure here, very exciting, very cool, completed pattern, just absolutely two thumbs up. 